There he is. I saw that line twitch. I'm fishing a high-vis line when this blade bait was dropping and I saw, I saw the line jump. That's cool. It's a good reason to fish high-vis line. Nice big largemouth. Nice fish, not a giant, but a, plenty happy with him. Our fish are where they're supposed to be on this lake. Nice. Mm. Perfect hook job there. I'll move over here so the camera's not totally backlit. As you can see, perched right in the corner of the mouth, that treble hook. Be a nice, easy, healthy release on this girl. Go easy, honey. Sticky, sticky hooks. So that's what we're talking about today. We're cold water blade baiting bass. Great for largemouth, great for smallmouth, and we're gonna see if we can get another one right now. There you go, bud. It's all about that line up, right down that length of waypoints. We've mapped this spot pretty good with side imaging, so I know the extent of this rock patch. And the bass out here really like to live on this stuff. So I can get away with fishing a treble bait on the bottom, crank baits, blade baits, which bass really tend to like in the cold water period for whatever reason. And with my 360 imaging, I got a great line up through my waypoints. I'm seeing the rocks and I'm just making clean casts right to the hard spot where I know the fish happen to live on this spot. There he is, nice. It's a real unique thing with these blade baits is the positive feeling you get. It's kind of like a spinner bait or a chatter bait, you know, bladed jig. You feel what that bait is doing and rather than a flutter spoon where it's kind of falling and you don't get that real strong positive reinforcement on the upswing, it's almost opposite with the blade bait. It's just a clean fall, but then on the upswing is where you really initiate the action on that particular bait or on this style of lure. And it's like a lipless crankbait kind of. <clears throat> it's still not so cold where I don't get a nice jump out of these guys dealing with water temps in the low 50s right now. So they're lar northern strain largemouth are pretty darn happy and they will be, you know, well down into the 40s. So it's a good day to be out. There he is, nice. Little hops, dropped it to the bottom there. If you look at underwaters on this bait, it's, it's pretty unique in the blade bait category in that it sits upright. So. I don't know, it gives me a little bit more confidence that my hooks are in play better when that bait's sitting upright. That rear treble hook's a little more accessible and I went up for the upswing and he was on. So I don't get too radical on the hook set with these light, you know, these sharp, tacky treble hooks and with a braided main line to a fluorocarbon leader. You don't need to jack them hard, this isn't a big hook. And you're skin hooking them a lot, no different than a crankbait. So I, I tend to like to go a little bit easy. Spinning gear is my preferred. I like the line pickup that you get with the bigger spool, a 3000 size reel. This one happens to be a Daiwa Procyon. And then I think you just got better control overall, your better line management. Look at this, that's a cool thing too. You know, it's a, it's a true multi-species bait anywhere. You go into any Canadian guide's tackle box you're gonna have blade baits anywhere within the Great Lakes states and a lot of places down south too. White bass, striped bass, wipers, lake trout, pike, walleye, crappie, <laughs> you name it. Nice little walleye, cool. So I shifted my position relative to the spot. I started kind of upwind and I was casting straight line downwind. Caught two, caught two fish. Oop, drags a little loose. And it's a small spot, so I did what you would do with the crankbait. I just switched my casting angle, I dropped downwind. So now I'm kind of hitting it from you know 180 opposite, casting direct into the wind. And that's just helping reduce any bowing in my line. Cause I do wanna, you know, I wanna know when the bait hits bottom and when I'm hopping it, I don't wanna bow in the line. And I'll explain how I'm fishing it. Drag's a little loose. back grab him see he got a nice nice eat on it down into the mouth a little bit there I grab a players on this guy a 
On this top Solix here, you can see I have my waypoints. They're kind of sitting out to the outer edge of my range, 86 feet. I usually like to start further out from a spot and then work my way in. So I'm plucking, you know, fish from the closest edge to me. So I'm not catching a fish on the far back edge, bringing a hooked fish through a school and spooking that school. So I got my range ring set up. They're about 20 feet, 20, 40, 60, 80 right now. And if you take a look at the lower screen, 2D sonar and mapping, but what you'll see on mapping is there's no contour change here. This is a flat spot. The only difference is composition. And that's where 360 is just a huge, huge aid. It tells me where to place my cast. So I take a look at my 360, 12 o'clock, right into the wind. I see my rock. I'm just making a lineup. Made my cast, and then I kind of like to drop my rod tip so that line is straight in the water so the wind doesn't catch it. And I'm just following that bait down, and it rockets to the bottom real quick. Unlike a spoon, it's kind of opposite of a spoon. Now it's on the bottom. Now I get the action out of the bait on the upswing. And blade baits are fun, boy. They really give you a hard, consistent wobble on the upstroke. So you can really feel what that bait is doing. And because it sinks straight back down when you kill the bait, you also can get detect those line bites. Where a spoon can be a little bit more difficult doing that, I can detect those strikes pretty good on the fall with this blade bait. There we go. So on the cadence, all I'm doing, that's a big fish there. Feels nicer than the other ones. Nice. You want a smooth drag for this setup. I like to fish lighter lines so that bait can sink faster, less water resistance. And naturally, light line fishes better on spinning gear. You can tell that fish swung on it, and I actually do have a trouble in the corner of its mouth, and then I got one skin hooked on the outside. Real pretty lateral line, kind of an olive green color. Let her go. 